Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're welcome to another episode of Tech and Cultures. My name is Jibril Ibrahim, and today we'll be looking at an interesting story, well, of a family with challenges. The issue is a challenge of infertility. This is a test that Allah has promised that some of us will have, some of us will have to face, and some will not have to deal with. Like Allah tells us in the Quran, that some of you, I will give you male, some of you I will give you female, some of you I will give you male and female, and some of you I will not give you any child. This is a decision of Allah, and uh, we can only pray and support those that are tested with this. Today we'll be looking at a story about infertility, about childlessness, in a situation where initially it was the woman that undergo tests that shows like she is the problem. And then the man could not wait after a while, went to marry other women while the woman struggles to the point that she was even going to, there is this arrangement that they say that you pretend to be pregnant for a while, you'll be using something to pad your stomach. And then by the time it's nine months, you actually go somewhere to buy a child, to pick up a baby and come back that you have delivered the baby. So she was on the verge of doing that, and then the whole uh, situation broke loose, and our counselors were contacted. So let's watch the analysis and learn from their experience. To what extent would you go to be a mother? And then what is supposed to be the role of a husband in a marriage where there is infertility issue? These are the points of our discussion today. There's a story of a couple who are having infertility issue in their marriage. All test results show that the wife is the one with the issue in the marriage. And then they have tried everything possible to make sure they have a baby in the house, but to not avail. They've tried IVF. And then when the wife wanted to go for adoption, the husband clearly refused and is so nonchalant about the issue, possibly because he, he has other options. And the wife, knowing that she doesn't have any other option, and she's left with, I mean, she's stuck with him. She's making every effort to make sure she, you know, she gets a baby. And the husband, too, with his options, he was able to get a second wife, even to the extent of third wife, but still no baby. The wife, the first wife, on the other hand, too, is like planning to do or to go extra miles just to have a baby in the house. So if you are in this um, woman's shoes, like, Sister Zuleha, um, what, what do you think about this issue? What would you advise? Oh, no. What do you think about this? Now, uh, infertility issue happens to be a very emotional issue, a very sensitive issue for couples that are going through it. Yeah. Everybody, man or woman, gets married with that desire to have children, yeah. to have a little me, a little boy or girl that is, that, that is a replica of you, that inherits some of your characteristics, somebody that is your offspring, came out from your body. So women have this desire more, but even men too, they wish this. There are some men that really want to have many children. And so when a couple is tested with infertility issues, it can be a very harrowing experience. It has ended many marriages. Many marriages are still going through the turmoil. It becomes even worse when the couple are not on the same page, like in this uh, situation that you have, uh, you have explained now. It becomes worse because it is something that is uh, torturous for both parties. It's a journey that is difficult for both sides. So one person should not be left. And many times in Africa, especially before this era, we see that once there is no child in a marriage, the woman is at fault. Yes. She's regarded as being a barren woman. And then she's the one that is subjected to all kinds of medical tests and all kinds of, you know, herbal concussions, everything. It's always 
a done deal that the man is okay. He's definitely okay. He might even be citing cases of when he had children as a young man or he impregnated so many girls when he was in university and things like that. So it's always the woman that goes. But now we are coming to realize the medical people are, be are beginning to tell us that many men to have uh, issues of low sperm count and this and that. So, but for the most part, most men are still not ready to subject themselves to tests. And that's why you will see that it's the woman that, uh, for instance, in this case, medically it has been shown that the woman has issues. Medically, it has not been proven that the man has, because he has not subjected himself to the test. But his mind, the second and third wife now, has proved the whole, I think the, 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 the issue is now in the open for anyone that cares to, yeah, you know, to, uh, to know that definitely it may be that the man has a problem. But where it becomes even more burdensome is where the IVF procedures and the other fertility procedures they do do not work. You know, that's where it becomes even more painful like in this case of this woman. So there are many facets to it. Yeah. I just pray may Allah assist those that are going through it. The wife, the, the, the wife had, you know, clearly, I mean, after uh, a medical test shows that the wife is the one with the issue. And then until he went to, you know, to get married to other wives and it now happened that other wives too uh, don't, don't have children to point. So is it now not, is it both of them now not have the issue? And then in this case, how do they, what is their best best? Like what, how, do, mm. how are they going to do about it? Mm. You know, the issue, of, uh, the issue of infertility sometimes there is, uh, of course, m most part of it is medical, but there's also the, uh, the Kadar part of it too. Yes. Sometimes also there is issue of uh, having second opinions or third opinions because there are some people that did not have children in, in one marriage and then they married another person and then they went on to have children. Yes. Yeah, even spiritually too. And then Allah has already told us in the Quran that he is the one that decides. He gives some people male children, he gives some people female children, he gives some people both male and female children. And he then, there are some people that he doesn't give any. All is still within the knowledge of Allah. And so sometimes at, it will get to a point why the woman will be desperate in this her own case is because her biological clock is ticking. We have a time limit for us women. There's a time where her menopause will come and she will no longer be able to. That window is closed for her. But for a man, he has a longer stretch of time where he can keep on trying. Even at 80, he can have a child, things like that. And so that's why I will understand why this woman is desperate and frustrated. Even, even trying to see if she can buy a baby or go for surrogacy or adoption and all those kind of things. Some of those options are Islamic, some are not Islamic. If you are in that position, what will you do? What will be your best bet? So we will be discussing that on our next episode. Stay with us. Welcome back. I hope you learned one or two things from that episode, especially the issues of accepting Qadar. There are some things that Allah has written for you. What Allah has written for you will not pass you. And what was not written for you, you can never get it. So after making all our efforts and everything that is humanly possible, it is important that we go, don't go into haram just because we want something that is probably not meant for us. The first segment that was aired today is about that. And inshallah, tomorrow how to manage or the recommendations for this family on how to manage that situation will be discussed inshallah in the next episode i'll see you again in the next episode and i say ma salam <laughs>